Hey everybody! This is Death by D4. Welcome to my guide on how to play as the wildcard rogue subclass in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. There's a lot to go over, so be sure to subscribe and let's dive right on in. When you take this subclass at 3rd level, you get Tricks Up the Sleeve, which grants you the ability to cast the Guidance Cantrip. At 9th level, your Guidance Cantrip is then enhanced, gaining a range of 30 feet and the ability to be cast as a bonus action. Though this feature doesn't seem all that crazy at first, the bonuses at 9th level are actually kind of insane. The Guidance Cantrip is already a really nice cantrip to have, but being able to cast it at a range as a bonus action just makes it far more useful for you. Heck, since it uses your bonus action now, you can then use it preemptively before performing any ability check, basically meaning you'll always have it whenever you need it. Damn, well, despite how useful this can be, it still only really applies to any non-combative situation. Overall, a decent feature to have, but nothing I would get all that excited over. You also get Wildcard's Gambit at 3rd level, which grants you proficiency in one gaming set of your choice, from a dice set, dragon chess set, or a playing card set. When you do this, you gain access to a completely unique set of abilities tailored around which gaming set that you've picked. With the dice set, you gain a pool of d6s equal to the number of sneak attack dice. When another creature attacks you, you can then use your reaction to spend 1d6 to subtract it from their attack roll. This feature also improves as you level up, gaining the ability to spend 2 dice at 9th level and 3 dice at 17th level. With the Dragon Chest set, you gain the ability to do a variety of different things with your bonus action a number of times equal to your Charisma modifier, recharging after a long rest. Dragon allows you to choose a creature within 30 feet of you and, when they make a successful attack before the start of your next turn, they deal extra damage equal to your level. Griffin grants you a 10-foot bonus to your movement speed and makes it so that way your movement no longer provokes opportunity attacks until the start of your next turn. And Sylph allows you and all allies within 5 feet to gain advantage on dexterity saving throws until the start of your next turn. And with playing cards, you gain the ability to use your action to make a thrown weapon attack at a creature using one of your playing cards. That is, provided that you haven't already used your sneak attack already on your turn. The card has a range of 30 feet and deals 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier's worth of slashing damage. However, when you deal damage with this ability, you look at the value rolled on the d4 and apply an effect corresponding to its value. On a 1, you get Blade, which allows you to add your sneak attack damage to the card's damage roll, and also deal additional damage equal to half your sneak attack roll at the start of your target's next turn. On a 2, you get Shackle, which halves your target's speed, and makes it so they're only capable of attacking once until the start of your next turn. On a 3, you get Heart, which allows you to add your sneak attack damage to the card's damage roll, and also regain hit points equal to half the damage dealt, transferring any excess into temporary hit points. Finally, on a 4, you get Wild Ace, which allows you to choose freely from any of the other three effects. Wow. Not only are these fantastic options for your subclass to have, but it also allows you to play this subclass in a variety of different ways. That said, some of the abilities do seem to be a bit stronger than others, but I digress. All in all, this is definitely a really fun feature for you to have, and one that you're bound to get a lot of use out of over time. At 9th level, you get Shifting the Odds, which allows you to use your bonus action to teleport yourself up to 120 feet to an occupied space that you can see once per short rest. When you do this, every creature within 10 feet of you must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 4d10 force damage. On a successful save, they take half damage instead. Wow, uh, okay, so this feature is absolutely just absurd. Not only does it allow you to reposition yourself within a really significant range, but the AoE damage that it deals is just really good, especially since it deals force damage. The only thing really holding it back is the simple fact that you can only use it once before needing a short rest. Which really makes me wonder what the heck they were thinking when they designed the Path of the Depths Barbarian subclass. Either way, just wow! This is definitely a really good feature for you to have, and one that you'll probably be very thankful for later on. At 13th level, you get Twist of Fate, which allows you to swap initiative rolls with one of the creature that you can see before the first round of combat. Quite an impressive feat, really. However, it's also kind of trash. Considering that your dexterity score is likely going to be your best stat already, that means your initiative roll is already going to be quite good. That and you really don't gain a lot out of going first anyway, at least not when compared to the Assassin subclass would anyway, so this feature really doesn't do a lot for you. However, what it's actually useful for is swapping initiative orders with you and your allies, allowing them to possibly go earlier in combat. That alone makes it pretty remarkable and could potentially change the entire start of a battle if you utilize it correctly. All in all, a highly dependable feature, but one worth having around for when you need it. Finally, at 17th level, you get Joker Wild, 
which allows you to use your bonus action to transcend into an incorporeal form for one minute per long rest. While in this form, you regain all charges to your wildcard gambit feature, your movement speed is doubled, you gain resistance to all damage types, immunity to the grappled, paralyzed, stunned, and restrained conditions, and can move through objects and creatures as if they were difficult terrain. If you end your turn within a creature's space, then the creature takes 1d10 force damage and is shunted 5 feet away from you. Alright, so... I don't really know how to react to this feature, because it basically just makes you unstoppable for an entire minute. Seriously, even the fact that you could telefrag into an enemy creature is just weird and unusual, because it's completely different from how the rules for these things usually work. And don't even get me started on the fact that there's absolutely nothing stopping you from just ending your turn inside of another object. Damn, well... Yeah, this is just a super good feature, and one that you're probably going to be getting a lot of use of once you get there. Alright, so that does it for all of the subclass features. Now onto just a few of my own personal recommendations concerning it. Though dexterity is still your primary stat, you should still try and invest some points into your charisma score, as many of your subclass features scale around that. Speaking of which, when it comes to your wild cards gambit feature, I feel that the playing cards are just generally the best option for you, as you already have uncanny dodge and evasion helping you out where your loaded dice would, and the uses of your dragon chest pieces just seem to fall a bit short as compared to your wild card suits. Yes, they are more random than your dragon chest pieces, but the playing cards allow you to inflict your sneak attack damage roll more than half of the time without needing to meet its requirements. Heck, even on those times when you roll a 2, you end up debuffing the enemy so greatly that they basically can't do anything on their turn. Either way, it's just way better for you than the other options. Finally, if you want to be more reliable with your skill checks in general, then try multiclassing this with a few levels of Bard, as Jack of All Trades and any additional expertises will make you highly capable of attacking any check that the DM could possibly throw at you. And that's it. That's everything you need to know in order to play as a wildcard rogue. Personally, I believe that this class is really fun, but it's also a bit ridiculous in some places. That said, if you've seen my other videos covering the Bilgewater subclasses, then that may not entirely surprise you. However, that's just my opinion. So what are your thoughts on the matter? Are you excited to give the Wildcard Rogue a try? And, if you have already, what was your experience with it like? Let me know down in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, be sure to give this video a like and consider supporting me over on Patreon. Patreon supporters gain access to my patron-only server over on Discord, where you can join in on my games and chat with me and other patrons about anything D&D related. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't, and if you're interested in seeing more videos of mine, here's one right up over here. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.